I'm very excited to share this with you. Today we are going to create those beautiful 3D flowers by using a little bit of mathematics in this P5JS. It's fully controllable by sliders, you can generate various types of flowers with one set of equations. The idea originally came from a set of mathematical work by this person, Dr. Janos Karsai. He's a math professor at the University of Seged in Hungary, and I'm not sure when exactly he is, but he designed those beautiful math flowers. I found some implementations and demos of the flowers in his homepage and several other resources. On this particular page, there are three equations to shape the 3D flowers, and that's exactly basically what we're gonna implement in this video. There's a link over the page in the description below. But here's the thing. I don't wanna show you just copy and paste the equations from the site, then boom, get the result. Instead, I wanna show you all the process building the equations from scratch and how each term in the equation is responsible for a part of the flowers. So that through this video, you will get a sense of how to use math equations to create such a flexible shapes and be creative in your own way. So now we get into it. There is one concept crucial to create that flower shape. That is this polar coordinate system. Let me explain the fundamental very quickly. This is Cartesian coordinate system we get used to. We can define any point on the space with this x and y, right? But the same point on the space is also can be defined by using the radius, which is how far from the center, and this angle between the segment and x-axis. That is the polar coordinate system. When we draw something radial shapes like flowers that come into play. But even though the functions draw vector shapes like ellipse, points, vertex, cannot handle the radius and the phi. At least in P5JS that I'm gonna use, so it require the x, y of the Cartesian coordinate. So we need to convert those radius and phi into this Cartesian coordinate. And that's actually very simple. If I draw two segments here and here, According to Sokatoa, the adjacent is defined by this hypotenuse times cosine phi, right? So that this length, the x component, gonna be like x equal radius times cosine phi. You get that? And similarly, opposite is defined by hypotenuse times sine phi. So this y component is also gonna be like y equal radius times sine phi. So we're gonna use those two parametric equations in the coding. Okay, we're gonna actually design the flower here. In the initial setup function, I set the color mode to HSV and angle mode to degrees for convenience to me. In the draw function, I'm drawing the green background. So let's implement the polar coordinate we just learned. For now, I'm gonna place a lot of points on surface of a circle using the polar coordinates. Okay, so how we can make this ellipse cross to the final result? Hmm, first the radius of the flower is distorted in this way, right? So to do that, I'm gonna add another trigonometry term right after the radius. Yeah, if you see the circle just shrink like this, don't worry, it's supposed to be so. What I'm gonna also do is multiplying this phi in this term by an arbitrary value. Hmm, <laughs> suddenly it becomes interesting, isn't it? So let's change this value a little bit, like 3, hmm, what about 2, 6, hmm, 5, okay, it seems when it's odd number, the number of the petal is identical to this integer, but whereas when it's even number like 4, the number of the petal is doubled. What's happening behind is, we are mapping the sine wave in Cartesian coordinate into the polar coordinate system. This is a sine wave which is y equals sine x on Cartesian coordinate, and another one is a polar coordinate equation that radius equals sine phi. Yeah, this, this shape looks identical to the one we just saw a minute ago, right? So if I increase the frequency of the sine waves, yeah, the petal number increases too. Goes up to 4, yeah. Now you got the sense, right? This flower is actually the polar coordinate version of this sine wave. So the number of the petal is identical to the number of those protrusion of this sine wave. But when the frequency is odd integer like this 3, 
Mm. The upper and the lower protrusion overlap each other like this. So the number, so the petal number gonna be half. Alright, next, the final result, the petals don't intersect at the center like this. Yes, you probably realize that all we need to do is move this sine wave, not to touch the x-axis. Like this. Uh, kinda looks awesome. So let's add the value here. Like 100. Mm, it's not enough. Mm, 200. And what about 300? Ah, it's too big, so I change this term smaller, like 70. Hmm. What about 200? No, 225. Okay, I go with this for now. Next, we actually take an absolute of this sine function. So what happens? Hmm, the number of the petal has been doubled. Because the absolute means take the length of the amplitude, the distance from zero, so the value always gonna be positive. Okay, and because of this, the shape between the two petal is kind of more defined, so looks more realistic. Uh, maybe I should write like this. And furthermore, for in case you want a more sharper petal, we take a power of this term. The power of 1 is identical. 2, the power of 3, hmm. Alright, now we have the basic horizontal shape of the final result. So now it's time to dive into 3D. I set this canvas to WebGL mode. Add 3D mouse control. Then I set the Z value as 0 for now. Oh, in the WebGL mode, the origin point is at the center by default, so we don't need this code anymore. Hmm, good. Next, I add one more loop outside here to duplicate this flower shape ring. Mm, that looks identical, but actually the 60 same figures are overlapping. So if I multiply the radius by the theta divided by uh, 60, yeah, the theta divided by 60, the value is from 0 to 1, so that creates this dense flat shape. So now we think about the z value to create a three-dimensional structure from this plane. We need to be a bit creative here, how we can flexibly make this trumpet shape. Also this ball shape with single equation. Well, firstly the z value is depend on the radius value, which is how the point far from the center, right? So the z value definitely need to contain the radius. Hmm. So this is good start. So what else we need? The trumpet and the ball shape, these shapes are definitely what require some exponential term to create, right? So I make the radius to exponential. <laughs> it's too sharp. Um, I div divided by 10. Mm, 20. Whoa, this is nice. Now we have the ball shape. On the other hand, when I set this exponent below 1, oh, it's too small. I multiply 100. Yeah, now we have the trumpet shape. But when it comes to a very sharp bending like this, we can't have that with single exponential term. We actually need another one. This time I set the radius as the exponent. Hmm, interestingly it looks identical. So what if I increase this root value? Uh, as I expected. Or what if I set it smaller, like 0.5? Oh, what is this? 0.9? Hmm, I divided by... I divided by a hundred. Oh, now I increase this value like 300. Yeah. Oh, we suddenly got this shape that resembles the final result. I'm cheating the answer. This is the equation Janos Karsai wrote on the page which is responsible for the vertical shape. It seems the answer includes one more exponential inside this, so I write like so. Oh, more warping outward. In addition, in the equation, this root is a Euler's number, aka mathematical constant, which is approximately 0.7, and also has a coefficient here, which is, in this case, 
Alright, this is it. Hmm, it seems this coefficient and this exponents are responsible for the petal hanging out. By the way, when you expand the range of the theta in negative way, like this minus 60, yeah, you see some byproduct like this. This thing has a possibility to play with too, but if you want to prevent this happen, you can restrict those value to positive by taking absolute. Now we're gonna add this bumpiness to the petals. That wave is obviously made using trigonometry, so I add a sine wave to the z value. Uh, I don't see any distortion, maybe that's too small. So I multiply by 10. Oh, I need to increase the frequency. Hmm, nice. So what about 12? Alright, I like it. I also add a square of the radius here, so that the closer to the center, the smaller the convexity. I change this to 0.8. I also change this to 0.15. I want to have a 5 petals instead of 8. Okay. This looks a bit messy, so let's make functions for the vertical shape and the bumpiness. I move the equation, then pass exactly the same parameters through arguments. Alright, in the next video, we will make the parameters fully controllable, then make various types of flowers we see in real world. I will upload part 2 in about a week and put the video at the top right here.